In the Gospel reading today, Peter looks at our blessed Lord and asks the question, for, for those of us who have left everything to follow you, what are we going to have in return? Now, the answer that our Lord gives is, of course, for those who have left home and mother and father and brother and sister and so on. But the fact is that for all of us, if we are going to truly follow the Lord, there's a lot that we're going to have to leave behind. The things of this world are going to have to be left behind if we're truly going to follow Christ. And so the question is, what will we have? And the Lord makes very clear, not only will you have a hundredfold of whatever it is that you have left, but you're going to have eternal life. And that's the part that is most important. And what he's letting us know, even in stating that point, that you're going to have eternal life plus a hundredfold of everything else, it tells you just a tiny bit of what heaven is going to be. It is going to be not only the fulfillment of all of our desires, it is going to be at least a hundred times more than the, our greatest desires. In fact, it will be infinitely more than our greatest desires. So when we really stop to think about that, it's, it's an unfortunate thing that tends to go on these days when we think about eternity. There are lots of people who have bought into the lies. And so they've got this idea that, well, hell is just gonna be like kind of a really hot, humid day, you know, maybe it'll be about 95 and humid. It's kind of miserable, but you know, I can handle that. Hell, on the other hand, well, that'll be, you know, 75 and sunny, and well, won't that just be a nice day? Sorry, that's not what things are like. Hell is a total deprivation of absolutely everything. The only thing, the only thing in hell is you. Oh, there will be lots of other souls there, but you don't care about them and they don't care about you. Therefore, the only thing in hell is you. You are stuck with you for the rest of eternity. That's what makes hell, hell. It is that miserable, looking at your own self for the rest of eternity. And so in heaven, it is looking at God, and it is united with God, loving God, loving our neighbor, all the other souls in heaven, everyone loves you and you love them, and you are completely fulfilled. And by itself, that sounds pretty wonderful, and indeed it is. But it's infinitely beyond that, because you have God. And so you are not just filled and fulfilled, it's overflowing. And it's overflowing infinitely for the rest of eternity. And it's not just, well, you know, well, I guess it'd be kind of nice to be loved. No, no, no. We are talking about God doing only what is the very best for you. You doing only what is the best for God and for all the people around you and everyone else doing that for you. But because everything exists in God, when you have God, you have everything. So in hell you have nothing. In heaven you have everything. And I mean everything, an infinite everything. Because you have God. So it's not just, oh yeah, I guess heaven will be kind of a nice day and hell will be kind of a bad day. Oh no, hell's gonna be a bad day a really bad one for the rest of eternity, but infinitely worse than anything that anyone has ever experienced on earth. Infinitely worse. Heaven is going to be infinitely greater than anything that we have ever experienced. So again, if we can look at it in that kind of a way, we begin to realize that when our Lord says, you will have a hundredfold. 
of everything that you've given up and eternal life. Again, a hundredfold, that's just for our humanity to be able to go, wow, that's a lot. And we're talking infinite without end. That's what God has for you. And let's make it clear, when you get to heaven, you're not going to care about things because they don't matter. You don't need them and you don't want them. The only thing that matters is the fulfillment of your person. And you're made for love and you're made for truth and you're made for life. You're going to look right at God who is love and truth and life. You will be filled totally, completely, and overflowing with love, with truth, with life. It will be absolute bliss without end. That's what God has for you. So it's not so much about what am I giving up? And it's not even about what am I gaining? Because we don't want to be selfish. It's a very simple proposition. Follow the Lord. Love the Lord. That's all. That's what it comes down to. You know, what Peter's talking about, what do we get if we've given up everything to follow you? Just worry about following him. Don't worry about what you're giving up. Just love God. If we can do that, he'll take care of everything else. That's all that matters. So that's the priority. And then trust. Yeah, it's not immediate gratification like we like. It's put off until eternity. But it is obviously well worth it because it is infinitely more than we could ever ask or desire. Infinitely fulfilled, infinitely loved. It is just beyond anything that we can even begin to imagine. So it is worth it even if you had to give up everything. But really all that the Lord is asking is that we would quit being in love with ourselves and be in love with him instead.